Hello again everyone, Mary Rose here at Stitch Bliss Corner and please excuse my hair, um, I think we're all suffering from hairdresser deprivation syndrome. <laughs> so, uh, I might have to have a hack at it myself like um, Marlene stitching by the lake, she was saying that she was cutting her own hair and uh, I think, who's that singer? Katie, Katie Lang, she always cuts her own hair, so she can do it. I should imagine I can do it. Anyway, so much for that. <laughs> I hope everybody is as well as can be expected in these very strange and mysterious times. <laughs> and uh, I just thought that I would give you my mania update because for me, mania finishes, well, finished last night. Uh, because I've finished my um, Dreaming of Tuscany piece and I Harlequin is working on something for me uh, he's doing a chart for me and um, I tend to stitch where the love takes me and this particular image I couldn't get it out of my mind once I saw it uh, a bit like Scout here He's the only other one that I've felt this strongly about. Um, and because Harlequin's been very much concentrating on that, and he's got a lot of family history that he's sorting out for people, um, I didn't really want him to have to load up a, a little vlog every day for me because it does take an awful lot of time. Anybody who's edited will tell you uh, how much time it takes um, and I just didn't want to load him up with that as well as the other thing he's doing for me and I shall show you that on my next video which may well not be that far away because I did decide that I would start it in June but I just don't know if I can wait that long <laughs> so <laughs> we'll just have to see you know what stitching's like it just you know takes you sometimes so I think the best thing to do now is to take you what I did do was take a photograph or a screenshot of my progress every day uh, to finish up Dreaming of Tuscany and then when I come back from this little group of images I'll just go over a few things with you then. I think that's the best idea. Because really, the second half of the piece, there wasn't a lot to talk about anyway, on a daily basis. And I can cover that uh, when you come back. So I'll take you to that now.
So that's Dreaming of Tuscany all packed up and done. Um, so what I shall do now is just get the piece over here. Now, in the original, there, there are a few things that I, naturally enough, I always do things differently to the original. Now, the original, as you can see, up here, there are, all, there are clouds and things. Oh, my Tuscany wasn't having any clouds in it. Um, <laughs> so that's why I've just got the blue fabric there. Um, the other thing was... These leaves up here are all half stitches and I could have done half stitches there but I decided to do the full stitches uh, single thread uh, because I just liked it better. Um, I'm not a fan of half stitches as you know but on this side let's see if I can get this On the wall, I did a lot of half stitches there because that was supposed to be originally, if this had been on white fabric, that would have all been white fabric exposed without any stitching on it, which I quite like. And I would have done that if this was white. But instead, because it wasn't, and I have it on this uh, blue fabric, I did do half stitches, double thread, all up there for the wall. Now there was another thing that was on here. Um, oh, well, can you, oh yes, on this side. See, it's all back to front. I'm thinking, where's it gone? <laughs> this here, which mystified me as to what it was, so I decided not to stitch it. Um, and comments and suggestions were made. One person said it could be a key to open the window, which I thought was a very original idea. Uh, but someone else uh, says that it is actually, or a few people actually, that it is the exposed brick, uh, which it does look like that a little bit. But see, it was this naily looking thing above it. But it had just been that. I think I could have, I could have coped with that. But it's just this round thing above it. It was all too much for me. So that, I thought was a distraction anyway, so I just didn't stitch that at all. Now, I've on my iPad, I have taken some photographs this morning um, just to show you a bit closer up a few other things before I leave this. Just a few close-ups of the of things that I can show you, but I'm notorious with iPads. They, you know, flick off the screen. <laughs> I do think things wrong. Um, just hold it on the edge there if I can. Yeah. So there's a close-up of the coaching around the grapes. Uh, it looks like back stitching, but actually it's not. It's all couched around there. It's just that because it's so close up, you can see my holding thread. But I wanted everything to be as round as possible. Um, I don't like angles, as everybody knows. I don't like who's watched me. I do not like in stitching this, you know, jagged step type outlines on things I just don't like it so I try to avoid it where possible um, where else have we got here um, uh, the bottle uh, see here there was a little bit of the angles and I tried to sort of smooth that out a bit and I've put there 1953 uh, instead of um, what did 
Barbara Felisky. She's the artist. She's put 1939, which may well have been a, a, a year of significance for her. But I put 1953 because that was the year I was born. And as Harlequin said to me when I told him that, well, that was a very good year. <laughs> He's such a pet. <laughs> so anyway, um, what can I say about this piece? I did enjoy it very much. Um, and I think with dimensions, it is always a very good idea to... Uh, Think about it yourself. Like they suggest uh, various numbers of threads for each part, um, which is fine. And they suggest all sorts of things. But it doesn't mean you have to do it that way. You know, I mean, I have um, just put a few little tweaks in of my own, uh, you know, because I wanted to get that middle distance. I wanted to get the the distance there. I wanted that house to look further away. I wanted this one to look a little bit closer and that one to look closer still. But this to be right up in front of you. And you can do that by varying your stitches. You, you know, the number of threads that you're using, which is what Dimensions is trying. I think that's what they uh, their goal is. But I think you can also tweak it yourself. Um, so for those who are a bit nervous about doing a full coverage uh, but would like to have a go to see if they like it, I think dimensions are very good for that, the little petites, so that you can at least, you know, give it a try and see what you think. Now, I wouldn't suggest a dimensions petite for anyone who was an inexperienced stitcher because there is an awful lot to them. Because they've got a lot going on in a small amount of space, you need quite a bit of stitching experience to navigate round it. And how anyone can stitch a petite, a dimensions petite, accurately at least, without gridding, I do not know. I think it would take a long time to be doing that. And of course, because it's on such a small area and you've got so many things that you're going to be outlining and highlighting, you must make sure that all of your stitches are in the correct colour, are in the right... You can't really fudge. I mean, you can fudge, don't get me wrong, but if you want it as close to the original as possible, um, especially when they're things like you know, symmetrical things that you can't muck around with, you know, like bottles and glasses and things. You just can't fudge those. Um, well, unless you want that effect. I mean, it's up to you. But I do think that you have to really have, with petites, because there's less room for juggling and fudging, it is best to do them, the actual stitching symbols as they've been plotted out. You can fiddle with everything else, but if you want to get your shapes right, of your glass and your bottle or whatever it may be in the picture, um, because especially if you don't grid, they're the only landmarks you've got to go by to navigate your way round the shapes. You know, if you've got gridding, well, I suppose you could do a little bit of fudging because you've got the, the grid lines and you can match those up to the pattern with where your highlighting is going to go. So, you know, you can do it that way. Now, was there anything else I had to say about the dimensions? I don't think so. I think I've, you know, said quite enough about that particular one. So uh, that's my main year over. I'm actually going to do a couple of days of crocheting now. <laughs> well, it might not take two days, <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to do some crocheting. And um, I've just got it. There it is there. 
And uh, I don't crochet like a lot of people crochet. I crochet like I'm knitting. And by that I mean, I'll see if I can show you. Uh -huh. See where it's going in to there, right? I just go around like that and I'm going like I'm knitting. So it's all, I don't put any yarn on this hand. So, yeah, so it makes it pretty quick the way I, well, everything I do, it has to be quicker or else, you know, it doesn't get done. Um, which isn't strictly true, but anyway. <laughs> oh, what a funny mood I'm in today. Um, is there anything else I had to tell you? I don't think so. I think I'll just get on to this next. Well, see, I've still got a cross to divide to do, and I'm certainly keeping on stitching with that. But when this other chart is ready, and when the uh, fabric is ready, and I'm ready to go, I shall certainly do a video to show you what all the excitement has been about and uh, it won't be for everybody that's for sure but for me it's just uh, it it's um well it's like a signature piece uh, like, just like scout is here now i would just like to thank all those who watch and take the time to subscribe and who send me messages, send me comments, tell me things about themselves and what they're doing. And it, it's just very nice to, to see, uh, well, just to see that engagement between us, even though we're all so very far apart from each other. Um, that's that common thread, if you will. Uh, so, um, and I'd just like to mention uh, Kate, uh, that's C-A-I-T, Kate, um, Madam Ice. Uh, I, I suppose this is a shout out for Kate because she's a delight uh, and she stitches like a princess. <laughs> she's just wonderful. Um, uh, she's got a varying taste. Uh, and her videos are always, they're so fresh and, and crisp. I, I think that's the thing about Kate's videos. Um, you know, it's always nice to see one of hers pop up so I can see what she's up to. And she does a little bit of designing too, not too much because she's a busy person. Um, but uh, yeah, so just an spe extra special hello to Kate. Um, and uh, I'll sign off here and get back to you next time. So it's goodbye from Mary Rose.